Hey guys, so today's story is a redo of one of Felix's story and honestly it's worth doing a redo in voiceover because they're just such good stories. It's worth going back and leaving. Yeah, it, and like this know? is this is one of our favourites, so don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Check out all the links below and we'll see you at the end of the video. Be me, half a year ago. D&D 5th edition. Marches, dungeon, crawl and roll 20. Have a halfling rogue, halfling barbarian, human wizard and human cleric. Level 7 to 9. Party wants a beefy tank since the barbarian is all dex. Okay, I can make a tank. By the way, you're starting at level 4. Need to tank for a party twice my level. Going to crank armour as high as inhumanly possible. Ask DM if unearthed arcana races are Gucci. Get the okay for the one I want. Unleash the Juggernaut. 14, the Unearthed Arcana Warforged Fighter Forge Cleric. Made purely for war, hundreds of years ago deep underground. Hidden Creation Forge was destroyed in a sabotage attack that caused a cave-in. Trapped in an underground tunnel by himself with no lights or tools. Spends five years on burying himself and digging through rubble in the dark. Find enough wood and scraps to make torches. Burn up all the oxygen, finding out where he is. Start digging again. Five years later, find the forge. Burn all the oxygen while beating an old pick into shape by hand. Ten years later, finds the coal vein, but no air. Twenty years later, uncovers one of the air pipes leading to the surface. Air leads into a goblin infestation. Sixty years later, fully restored the forge to complete operation. Becomes a forge cleric as the smithing god is proud of his boy. A <laughs> hundred years later uncovered most of the complex. A hundred years after that, he has purged the creatures from his home. A hundred years later, he sees the sun for the first time. Emerges from the ground 400 years after his creation. 400 years of digging, forging and killing. Time for revenge. Party at the entrance of a dungeon discussing how to go in. Get their first look at 14 as he marches out of the forest. Eight feet tall, 400 pounds. Constantly casting three different thermatogy effects when not doing anything else. Voice booms like thunder. Eyes glow gold and emit smoke. Ground shakes when he walks. Wears nothing but chainmail and a red and silver monastic scapular. Carrying nothing but a very large warhammer and a shield bashes down the door in one swing and starts descending without a word. <laughs> Party suggests that the low level should hang at the back or middle. Give them a stare and keep going. <laughs> hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but today's sponsor is brought to you by the Furry Hunter class. <laughs> it's a class dedicated to slaying the furry menace that infests the land of Neckbeardia. And yeah, if you haven't noticed, it's a party of Matt Mercer of Critical Role's Blood Hunter. It's a solid shit post put together by us and a few of the DMs on the West March server. It's a great way to help us, and for the low low price of just one pound, it's hard to go wrong with the PDF. But enough of the Blood Hunter, let's get back to the video. Party has a spare set of plate armor they bolt around him. Plus one armor from Warforged, plus one from Fighting Style, plus one from Forge Blessing. Combine with plate and shield for 23 AC. Party has been in this dungeon before. Knows the room ahead is full of ogres. Starts to cast shield of faith to hit 25 AC. Other cleric is a bro and reads my mind. Does it first. Bust down the door and stride into the middle of the room. Four ogres on different corners all face 14. 14 calmly looks around as the party stares in horror. Activate voice changer I set up ahead of time. <laughs> Super deep, echoing, mechanical voice. I am the anvil. <laughs> For fuck's sake. It's supposed to be serious, Megan. I, I can. Oh, well. Ogres all charge. Can only hit on 19 and 20. All their attacks bounce off harmlessly. I am the hammer. Smash warhammer against shield. Rings like an anvil and the warhammer bursts into flames from searing smite. And I shall draw ye out. Starts pummeling the ogre directly in front of him. Rest of the party starts piling into the room and unloading on the ogres. Fourteen stands and fights them all every round. When one goes for someone else, Fourteen smashes it with a hammer while it leaves. 
follows it while ignoring the attacks of the others, then beats it into the ground. Rogue hides under 14's scapular since he's short. Ogres get distracted by the big flaming hammer. Don't expect a rapier to pop out from between the robot's legs to stab them in the junk. Obliterate the ogres in the room and move on without a scratch. Further in the dungeons, few more minor scuffles. Rogue keeps getting sneak attacks and refuses to come out from under 14 scapular. It's like mount rolls but the mount is on top. Keeps correcting her on terminology but she keeps referring to it as a dress or skirt. <laughs> Barbarian keeps making fun of 14 for having the rogue between his legs. What's it like having something down there, robot? <laughs> Length. 36 inches. Weight. 40 pounds. Familiarity? Normal. <laughs> Wizard is struggling to breathe. <laughs> Barbarian is impressed. Was comparing halfling to a smithing apron with tools. Heathens. Find a flowing stream of smelly and odd looking water. Clerk wants to study it later. Rogue is sure it's poisonous. Fourteen just drinks several gallons of it to store for later. Gets an extra stealth disadvantage for sloshing while he walks. <laughs> Apparently it's more noticeable than the ground shaking. Smash down another door. Find a room with an elven princess surrounded by plants, wounded and has been trapped for who knows how long. Fourteen spent nearly half a millennia stuck underground. Don't need a nose to smell this bullshit. Fuel my fire. Burning hands the room. Plants all turn into mushrooms. Elf turns into hideous mushroom monster. Wizard asks DM what the fuck is that thing? Passes religion and arcana check. DM. It's Zugmoy. An avatar of Zugmoy? No, it's Zugmoy. Oh. Slam the door back into the frame. Leave. <laughs> Come on. Why don't more people do that? Honest, no, no, not doing this. Yeah, See you later. Shut that shit back. Couple of days later, come back. Hit level five. Grab Shieldmaster to bash and pummel people. Down the stairs again. Room's all set. Ogre room up ahead. Kick down the door again, eight ogres this time, with multi-attack. Well, shit. Someone randomly points out that the new Eberron book dropped. Official Warforged. Get an official copy. Instantly online, definitely legal. <laughs> DM gives the okay to upgrade. Party stares in awe as 14 gets bigger and stronger before their eyes, and the plate is absorbed into his body. Juggernaut protocol engaged. Hammer time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, I knew you would fucking tell that. <laughs> I knew you would. Start obliterating ogres. Only two can reach the hallway at a time. More keep showing up. Too many for the party to deal with. Wizard casts Wall of Fire. Fourteen walks through the flames and drags fleeing ogres back into it one by one, finishing them off and dig around the dungeon before leaving again. A few sessions later, no more barbarians, so Fourteen is only tank. Still no magical gear. Doesn't need it. With a shield and his natural AC is 24 thanks to more levels. All offensive problems can be solved with percussive maintenance. Going into a nearby city that is currently going through an apocalyptic zombie outbreak. DM is just rolling dice and adding more zombies into a giant map every turn. Hundreds of weak enemies that are easy to hit and have awful attack scores. Exactly the combat 14 was made for. Avoids most of the hordes and goes through the alleys as we make straight for the college in the middle of the town that is being besieged. Use prestidigitation and thermatergy to create noises and lure away zombies. Make our way inside. Bunch of cloistered scholars and scared people taking shelter. Send our magic nerds to talk their magic nerds into finding out what's going on. Notice a child with his mother in the corner. Kid won't stop crying. Crying keeps attracting more zombies to the door. After a few turns and lots of arguing, Fourteen goes to check out the kids since Mum won't shut him up. Upon closer inspection, the child is crying because Mum is undead and trying to eat him. Jesus fuck. Grab the kid by the collar and the zombie mom by the face. Remove kid and toss zombie across the room. Set down kid and crush the zombie's head with a hammer. We'll pay for his therapy later. <laughs> Get a map of the city and start identifying survivors from the tower in the college. Party can't decide who to save. Keep arguing while zombies keep flooding into town. 
14 takes over and charts the most effective route to reach as many places where we know there are as many survivors as possible in one go. It's time to test our mettle. Let us not be found waiting. First stop is the burning orphanage directly across the street. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, this gets bad. Only issue is three stories tall and there's about a hundred zombies in the way. Press the digitation and thermatergy to create sounds of screaming from other side of the college to lure Horde away. Sneak across the street. Can't decide how to get kids out. Fourteen grabs the rogue from underneath him and throws her through the third story window. Wizard goes up next with a boost. Thirteen orphans and the headmistress all stuck. Rogue has a rope but the kids are too scared and probably too weak. Sorcerer and cleric see zombies turning around and start blasting. No time. Rogue and wizard start throwing children out the window so 14 can catch them. Most are terrified but a few seem to be having fun with it. Princess catch the headmistress as the rogue and wizard go down the rope. Shepherd everyone back into the college without losses while mage pops any zombies that get too close. Make a great distraction by running away from the college on our way to the next person. Shop owner is on top of his store surrounded by zombies that are climbing up. Can't clear them out and too many to divert. Wizard and 14 do some math and work out a plan. Wizard mage hands the rogue's other rope over to the shopkeeper. Yell at him to tie it around his waist. Hand the other end to 14. Cast featherfall on shopkeeper. Tell him to lay down and hold on tight. 14 yanks him off the building with all the power you would expect of an 8 foot tall forge machine. Shopkeeper flies over all the zombies and crashes into the wizard. Shopkeeper dislocated a shoulder and threw out his hip but he'll live. Pick him up and carry on. Third building got overrun so we moved on. Fourth was a pie shop that was surrounded. Go around back and break down the wall. Inside are the three happiest fattest halflings we've ever seen in awe at the size of these lads the lard ass family 14 can't even carry more than two of them refuse to leave without several massive stacks of pies for fuck's sake can't walk them back since moving that far might kill them hustle them out of the house and help them waddle down to the river that runs through the city find a rowboat tied to the shore load the lard asses in and the weight makes it dangerously close to sinking Pull them out and plan. Load the rest of the party in first. Floats fine. Fourteen comes to the conclusion that the Lardos family are all so fat that they are likely buoyant. <laughs> Test the hypotheses and they do indeed float more or less. Lash them to the side of the boat like life preservers. Party will just roll while Fourteen jogs along the shore. The way we came is upriver and the Lardos family makes the boat so slow it can't keep up with the current. Tell the rogue to tie the rope to the front of the boat. Gives 14 the other end. 14 takes it and walks straight into the water. 30 feet underwater. 14 puts the rope over his shoulder and starts walking. Pull the boat half a mile upstream from the bottom of the river. A few zombies at the bottom but 14 just grabs them by the head and squeezes without slowing down. (laughs) Drag the party to the keep in the middle of the river. Connected to the rest of the city by a pair of long bridges that are guarded. Drop off the storekeeper and the lard asses. Only survivors left are the people in the college and the keep. Most of the city is on fire and it's spreading. (laughs) Party can't decide what to do. Once again, 14 has a solution. Send a message to both groups to get to the top of their buildings. Drag the boat upriver with the party in tow. All the way upriver. Straight to the dam at the edge of the city. Mechanism is operated by a massive gate with winches. Climb to the top. Gate is jammed. Start operating the winch by hand and manually raising the gate with super strength. Goes up a couple of feet before it jams again. Stuck. Massive chain links thicker than your arm keeping it attached. Smash winch system with big ass hammer. Doesn't work. Rogue gives up. What now? 14 does the closest thing he can do to a chuckle. I require a larger hammer. (laughs) Start yanking cogs and metal from anything he can. Use forge cleric ability and skill checks to make an absolutely massive maul. Easily the size of 14 and made entirely of metal. Estimated the weight at around 500 pounds. Wizard casts enlarge on 14. 
picks up the maul and walks over to the chains. Cass heat metal on one of the links, waits until it turns a nice orange glow, smashes it to bits. Half the damn gate loses its support and is off the ground enough to start falling. Other chain is still holding on, barely. Shatter its chain with the hammer. Gate drops as the water behind it surges. Ripped out of place as the river floods into the city. Water washes through and starts destroying houses and sweeping away undead. Only building to survive are large stone ones like the keep and the college. Still thousands of undead milling about outside the city, but it's a start. As the party levels up, 14 takes his next level in cleric and his massive maul starts to glow red in his hands. Steam forms where he stands as the heat evaporates the water around him. DM rules it as a small fog cloud that does damage from the burning to anything near him. Won't have any more free days with anyone's schedule. Party has to keep moving but 14 stays behind to finish the job. Teary goodbyes as the party goes to find the source of the undead. For weeks the survivors in the city watch as a cloud of fog slowly descends on the streets. All they can hear is the moaning of undead, occasional cracks of shattering bones and a constant quiet hiss in the distance. Some claim to see flashes of orange light like lightning when they heard the shattering bones or pounding of metal. Others said there were newly burned and mangled corpses floating downstream. Still, others swore they could see a pair of glowing golden lights when the fog was thicker and the air grew hot. Rumours spread of a guardian spirit that boiled away the taint in the water and protected those who went foraging for food. Eventually the fog lifted and the survivors were left with an empty city. Small dams ran across nearly every street, redirecting water to drain most of the districts. Undead were gone, bodies piling in great mounds down river. No sign of their guardian anywhere. A few weeks later, a series of villages reported an odd bubbling in the middle of their streams, a steady wake of boiling water and steam. All of them said it never stopped going upstream. Shrines were built to honour the elusive saviour, the forge in the fog, the machine of the mist, the steam engine. Now, I think I'm going to steal this one for myself, to be honest with you. Currently, I'm playing as a paladin, but I do really enjoy clerics, and I do think, like, a Warforge clerk and a fucking fighter would be a really good mix. Yeah. Give it a couple of levels in each. I think it would be really cool. And it really, I don't know, it would just do it for me. I really enjoy it. And I love, you know, this is one of the things that I really like about Felix's stories is any time he makes a character, he really... He makes he, a he, fucking he, character. He just does. Like, they're yeah. so different and so unique. And, you know, you can really work with his stuff. You know, I really enjoy it. And, like, I know, guys, it's a really upload. But I think it's worth, worth it. It's worth it. Stories are that good that they should be told for generations <laughs> I and know. generations. I know. I actually do. I really love them. I think they're some of the best. So they are out there. So, uh, like, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as we did. Uh, we're still very close to hitting the 100,000 mark. So if you could go... Megan. How Sorry. Uh, if you guys could go ahead and, like, you know, subscribe and sort of say, you know, maybe share some of the videos about, it would be really good for us. Yeah. Uh, but no, until then, we'll see you next time, all right? Bye.